Was Senator Mary Landrieu's connections to the U.S. Attorney's Office the reason I was so aggressively prosecuted five years ago? In light of new revelations, ethical conduct complaints have been filed with the Louisiana Attorney Disciplinary Board. The complaints were filed against former Assistant U.S. Attorney Jan Mann, Salvatore Perricone, and the former U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District, James B. Letton. An ethics complaint was also filed with the Justice Department against Carla Dubinsky. Listen to me. Pay attention to me. Listen to me. Sure, sir. Yes, sir. You're a nasty little cowardly spud. All of you. You're hobbits. You are less than I can ever tell you. This is former U.S. Attorney James Letton on the sidewalk in front of the Tulane University Law School where he is an assistant dean. You destroyed my evidence. You destroyed my evidence. The New York Times best selling book. You talked about it. Here. This wasn't the first time Jim Letton has thrown the book at me. On January 25, 2010, I was arrested with three colleagues by the FBI and charged with entering federal property under false pretenses with the intent of committing a felony, a charge that was well beyond the facts of the case. It seemed to be an, an enormous overreaction uh, to what happened. And relatively soon, within the first couple of days, the prosecutors knew that this was not any terrorist uh, activity, and they knew that it was a politically uh, related matter having to do with uh, Senator Landrieu. We actually showed our real driver's licenses, each and every one of us. I walked up to Senator Landrieu's door. It was open. Anyone could walk in. It was uh, business hours. And I sat down on the couch. And then I said, and this was in the original FBI, FBI affidavit, uh, I said to the secretary, I said, I'm waiting for somebody. I didn't prosecute your case, hole. I recused. New York Times best selling book. You talked about it. I recused. I recused here. I recused from your case. Letton did recuse himself, but left the prosecution of the case to his number two, Jan Mann. Mann's personal connections to Mary Landrieu were well known. Going back to when the two went to school together, my attorney, Mike Madigan, believed that Letton's entire office should have recused itself, primarily because of relationships and personal connections with Senator Landrum. We looked at what uh, remained in, as the uh, leadership at that uh, point in time, and we learned uh, quickly on that uh, Senator Landrum's brother, who I believe uh, his name was Maurice, was part of the leadership of that office with uh, Jan Mann. Madigan wrote a strong letter to the Justice Department asking for the case to be moved to another jurisdiction, but that didn't happen. Jan Mann continued to press the case in spite of the outrageousness of the charges. Well, we thought it was a uh, uh, very uh, large overreach to be using that statute in the first place, particularly in light of the fact that it was obviously uh, designed for terrorist activity. And I think the prosecutors knew pretty soon on that that was not the, uh, uh, the case. The facts of the case were pretty straightforward, if slightly ridiculous. In January of 2010, Senator Landrieu's support of Obamacare led Louisiana voters to flood her office with complaints. The plan was to make an undercover video. United States Senator Mary Landrieu said her phones were jammed. We thought it would be revelatory and ironic and funny and YouTube worthy if we caught her staffers on tape uh, making derogatory comments about the Tea Party. Oh, let's just shut those phones down so those Tea Party people can't get through to us. Two of the participants were wearing hard hats and reflective vests purchased at a hardware store that morning. We looked absurd. We looked like the village people. In fact, they were, they were dressed so absurdly that one of the secretaries laughed when left and said, they, well, they aren't obviously telephone repair people. No one was fooled, and someone called the FBI. All four of those arrested faced felony charges that Mike Madigan says made no sense at all. There was no criminal uh, intent. There was no uh, effort to commit a felony, uh, no evidence whatsoever. But Assistant U.S. Attorney Jan Mann's prosecution was relentless and perhaps even unethical. Privileged client attorney emails were somehow released to the press just weeks after the arrest.
The only place that that could have happened from was from the seizure of James's computer by the government. Well, we thought it was extremely um, unprofessional, inappropriate, uh, if not uh, uh, criminal action. Madigan asked Mann to investigate the leaks, but his letter went unanswered. It now seems pretty evident that there were a lot of unethical activities going on in the U.S. Attorney's Office. Last year, five New Orleans police officers who had been convicted for a deadly shooting had their convictions overturned. In a 129-page ruling, a federal judge overturned the convictions, citing witness coercion, inconsistent testimony, and a scandal in which at least three government attorneys were revealed to have posted comments about the case online. They had anonymously posted prejudicial comments condemning the cops before and during the trial. The government attorneys were Jan Mann, Carla Dubinsky, and Salvatore Perricone. It also turns out that one of those U.S. attorneys was blogging about me. Salvatore Perricone used the screen name Legacy USA when commenting about my case. The day after my arrest, he anonymously blogged, Sure, they should be punished. Throw the book at them. On May 25, 2010, the Mary Landrieu case ended. The, the government gave me three years of probation for a Class B misdemeanor, and it, it was very unusual. The case was handled unusually, and days before I was sentenced, a federal judge, who usually doesn't get involved in misdemeanor cases, uh, made reference of an extremely serious crime I had committed. He said that it, there, he talked about acts of violence being committed. I have to say that in uh, 40 years of practice, I've never seen a probation like that. Um, it was extremely onerous uh, with regard to James, made his life uh, miserable, basically. Um, requiring all kinds of things that I thought uh, were totally unnecessary um, and that I've never seen before or since. I want people to know about this. I want them to know what happened here. All of these people need to be brought to justice. Now, five years on, it is time to set the record straight. Senator Landrieu needs to address these questions, and the prosecutors who handled my case must answer for their possibly criminal or at least unethical actions.